Okay, today we're going to look at adding notes to the score. And this is um, only for a notation composer. If you have a notation musician, you won't be able to do this. So you can either go upgrade now, <laughs> or uh, you won't need to watch this tutorial. For adding notes, there are three different ways you can do it. Um, one is to add notes with the mouse. One is to use step time recording. Um, the other is to record live. This particular tutorial is going to look at adding notes with your mouse. We have two other tutorials um, on the other two options. So this one will just be adding notes using the mouse. So we're going to first create a new song. You don't have to create a new song. If you have one that you've been working on or if you have a MIDI file that you found that you want to add notes to, it's the principles are the same. We're just going to do this because it's fun. Um, and I'll show you a few little things along the way. Okay, so we're going to create a new song. I'm going to use just a blank for one instrument. When you do that, you can actually go ahead and click the Staff Setup button here if you want. And you can pick your... Um, oh heck, you can pick your instrument here. Okay. And you'll see that it shows up in the score there. Kind of cool. Um, then we'll go to the next step. Set your meter. We're going to do just four for. Um, we're going to pretty much go with defaults. You set your key here. This is just like the key signature dialog box. Or you can pick from here whatever you want to do. We're just going to go with C. Um, you set up an initial number of measures. This does not constrain you to um, using just 16 measures. You can always add more later. Or you can add a boatload now and then delete them later. Whatever flips your trigger. Uh, we're just going to take that. Next, you can go ahead and give it a song title now if you want to. We're going to call this Note Entry Tutorial. Um, and you can choose which, win which view you want. Um, we can set it to Window View. That's usually a little easier for when you are working on your song when you're editing. Page View will show you what that song is going to look like as you print it. And you may want to do that when you're adding text elements and stuff. I find it easier to work in window view when I'm adding notes. And then you can set that as your default if you want. Um, or you can, you know, if you're going to do page view, if you want to look at a default page setup, you can do that. I'm not going to mess with that right now. So we'll click finish. There we are. We're in window view. We have our staff control buttons, which I find very useful when I'm working on. Let's see. Yeah. Um, different ones here, which I find very useful. Now, the staff is a little small, and to make it a little easier for note placement with the mouse, um, I'd suggest zooming in. So you can do that to make it as big as you want. Um, you can make it really big if you really want. We won't need it that big, I don't think. We will make it a little bit bigger just so it's easier to see in the video. Okay, now you'll notice that when you first set up a file, you're already in the Notes and Rests, rests palette, and you're, uh, you've are you got your notes selected here. Now what you want to do is you need to be in Add Mode, and up here you'll see there's a Region Select, there's Select Mode, there's Add Mode, okay? And there's also Step Time Record Mode, except the little tooltip probably is not showing up quite right. <laughs> Um, you can also right-click your button, your mouse button, which is what I'm going to do here. Right-click it, and you'll see it goes right to Add Mode. Okay. Or you can also click up here. Okay. If I right-click again, it takes me back to Select Mode. Right-click is a toggle between Select and Add. Okay. So we're going to go back to Add Mode. Um, you'll see if I'm I'm down here, the note shows up. It shows up with the duration of what I'm doing. Okay, see that's a half note there. All right, so now, if you know what the durations and the pitches are for notes you want to do, for instance, maybe you have a score that you you want to replicate in Composer so that you can change the key, um, or you want to work on it, you want to add some more notes, or you don't want all the notes that are there, whatever. Okay, this would be the way to do it. Okay, so 
you've got your cursor and the note will actually snap to both the pitch up and down on the line or the spaces. It will also show you ledger lines if you need those. Okay. You can put that here. Ooh, celeste. That's yeah, they typically don't play that low, so we could put that up here. That sounds a little more like it. Now, we don't want that note. Click on it, hit your delete key on your keyboard. Ta-da, all gone. Um, okay, now you'll notice though that we're back in select mode. Okay, right click your mouse and there you are again. You're back to add. Um, now I've got I'm, I've got quarter note on here. I can change that to whatever I want. I could put that here. Okay. Now, this is one time when you're adding notes that when you click the button up here, it's not going to change the note that is blue. If you've just added a note, and let's say the next note we want to add is going to be a half note, okay? When I click the half note button, it does not change the note that I just added. What it changes is the note that I'm going to add. And you can see that in the what's called the sprite, the little cursor there, okay? And sure enough, when we add that, it gives us um, that funky little tied note. Now, some people say, oh, that looks nasty, it's tied. That's supposed to be typical notation to help you keep time better. If you don't like that, say you want it, you don't want it to be a tied note, you want it to be, um, you, you want it to be a, a half note shown, okay? What you do, and I've been doing it here because I'm fidgeting, <laughs> select that tie, come over here and, and you'll notice that it, the palette goes to the ties note palette, or the ties tool palette here. Select the tie. Here is your collapse or uncollapse, okay? Um, and there you are. It gives you the collapsed note rather than the tied note. Okay, and let's see, there was something else I was going to show you. We're going to go back in add mode, maybe that'll make me think of it. Now, if you've messed with the tie and you go back in add mode, it's going to stay in the ties palette here. So you want to go back to notes, add notes. What about voices? Okay, you see the little single voice upper voice button here. Okay, sometimes you'll want to enter something where, say, the sopranos are doing all sorts of wild and crazy things up above, and the altos are being good and solid, and they're holding down the bottom. I used to sing alto. <clears throat> okay, so what we can do is we can put in, we can put in a whole note for the altos, and we're going to make that lower voice, okay? So let's say we put that here, okay? Now, and I could have left that with the, with the, uh, I, I right clicked, just so you know what happened. Okay, so now we're going to put quarter notes, but we want to make that the sopranos, okay? Okay, so you see how that goes? The altos maintained down here. The sopranos are going up here because we've entered them in separate voices. Now, it's a whole lot easier if you know you're going to have a passage like that to go ahead and use the voice buttons when you enter the notes. Otherwise, sometimes com um, composer might get a little confused because it's, it's not sure what you intend to do. So it'll try to put things in single voice um, unless you specify that you want to use two voices. We're going to put in a triplet, okay? So we're going. I right-clicked to go back into Add Mode. Triplets. When you want to put in triplets, you need to do that when you enter the note. You cannot, at this point in time, you cannot currently go back and say, "Whoop! I really wanted that to be a triplet," and then select the note and set it to be in a triplet. Won't work. You need to enter the triplet or the the tuplet. We and currently. Um, threes and fives are all that are allowed. Okay, so to enter a tuplet, you choose your note duration, and 
you enter you, or you click triplet okay and then if you want if you're doing all of them evenly you can just go ahead and enter your notes and you can do upper and lower voice again but once more if you're going to do it you have to do it as you're entering the note you can't um, you can't enter like um, chord chords as a triplet and then go back and redo the voice so we'll enter our triplet and you'll notice the beat ruler again okay and this is going to be an upper voice triplet okay and then we can go back and do the same for the lower voice okay so you have your upper voice triplet your lower voice triplet and you'll notice that the sprite shows you that you're entering a triplet okay it would be the same if you were doing a, a, a five tuplet now this over here is for swing or, or for if you it, it's a swing thing okay if you're going to start a triplet with a note that has a duration of two triplet numbers so if you want to have a quarter note uh, eighth note triplet okay so you need to do that again you need to do it when you're adding your triplet we're going to do this in single voice for the next one okay so we have our quarter note we're doing a swing triplet okay and this is to start it with the double duration at the front all right so we start here and then <clears throat> put on the here's the first beat second beat third beat okay so there's our swing triplet all right now let's talk about the beat ruler for just a minute I'm gonna right click again and the blue thing here is the beat ruler okay it's just like an inch ruler you see it has different divisions this little button right here will help you to set the how fine you want the divisions for the beat ruler okay if you want to spread it out to make it easier you can do that and it'll all it does is it horizontally expands and you'll see there that it's expanded the the uh, the distance between the things that's just to help you with positioning notes composer will you'll see composer will snap which it'll snap your uh, cursor to one of the, the beat divisions so you can't set it and I'm trying to get it so that's in the middle and you can't do that if you want a finer division you can check 16ths um, 30 seconds and see and you'll notice that it spreads out the measure for you so that you've got more room for maneuvering to get your cursor there okay so you can set that as to 60 fourths which is all my fingers could handle if that uh, <laughs> so you know whatever division you want to set it to you can do that using the beat ruler here okay and again if you want to set it there then any of those divisions it will snap to that so that you don't you know so because it has to keep track of where in time this is the composer is actually sort of a hybrid sequencer um, notation application you don't just throw notes onto the score you actually put them in the place where they're going to play um, that's the MIDI sequencer part okay so I think that actually takes care of our basic note entry by the mouse method have fun <laughs>